Hello, I'm Jake and welcome to The Retrospective. Today we have a topic that someone requested down in the comments and unfortunately I can't find the comment anymore so I'm not sure who requested it but if you want to leave a comment in this video then I'll credit you. Um, but the topic is the games that I've spent the most time playing so let's get into it. So I want to kick off the video by talking not just about singular games but about series because there are certain series that I have played all of the games over and over again. Those being Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill. With Silent Hill I'm one of those people that will run through the game over and over again and check every single room every single time I play um, and I just find that so satisfying to like check off the doors on the map and make sure you've gone into every single room and I think that that is the exact kind of thing that encourages you to go through the game over and over again um, it's very addictive in that way. I talked in a previous video about having all my games stolen and something positive to come out of that actually is that I then bought the Silent Hill collection which has become quite expensive recently. But as I've said before, this is pretty much the definitive way to play Silent Hill 2, 3 and 4 as they messed up the um, HD remasters on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. So as a kid, even though I shouldn't have been playing it as a kid, Silent Hill 1 was obviously the game I played the most, but then later on it became Silent Hill 2 and 3 and 4 as well actually that I would go through over and over again. With Metal Gear Solid, there's obviously the things that you can unlock, like the stealth camouflage, which really add that bit of extra fun on subsequent playthroughs, but also especially Metal Gear Solid 3, which I believe I've played the most out of all of them. Um, the details in that game and the amount of stuff you can do and little hidden things, um, even down to the codec conversations, which I'm sure I've still probably not heard every single codec conversation in the game. It really gets you in that mood where you want to discover everything. And I've actually got the Platinum on Metal Gear Solid 3 on the HD remaster. But let's not forget, there's also the dog tags in Metal Gear Solid 2, which depending on which difficulty you're playing on, guards will be in different positions and they'll all have different dog tags. And even guards you would think were the same on like easy and normal mode, if they're in the same position, they have different dog tags. So you are really encouraged to go through on every single difficulty level um, and just learn all the guard layouts and everything and get really deep into that game. The third series I want to mention is of course the Yakuza series which even one game is going to run you pretty much upwards of 40 hours worth of gameplay. The games also have really long cutscenes, but one of the main draws of the games is of course the amazing storylines, so I don't see these cutscenes as a detriment to the games in any way. Then if you wanted to complete all of these games 100%, you are looking at a staggering amount of time um, to go into these games. There's so many little side quests to do and even like mini side activities like the baseball or playing mahjong or even getting high scores at the arcades. So even though I've only pretty much played the Yakuza series once all the way through, there's still a pretty staggering playtime there I would say. So onto the singular games now that I've spent the most time playing, starting with a big one and that is Final Fantasy IX. If you know what you're doing and you've played it as many times as I have, then it's pretty short actually compared to the other Final Fantasies. And there's even a side quest in the game which tasks you to reach one of the end areas within 12 hours, which um, is, to be honest, insanely difficult to do. I've certainly never done it despite trying. However, more than any other Final Fantasy, I think Final Fantasy IX gives that feeling that there are secrets around every corner because when you walk up to items or treasure chests you get this little exclamation point above your head and there are also completely invisible items within the game where you have to basically be stood right on top of them to have that exclamation point and not only is this in you know towns and dungeons it's also on the world map 
and we especially had a lot of interactivity on the world map in Final Fantasy IX when it comes to chocobos, which is pretty much the number one thing that I spent my time doing uh, when I played Final Fantasy IX as a kid. Playing chocobo hot and cold, leveling up my chocobo so it could travel across mountains and oceans and then eventually fly, and looking for all the incredibly difficult to find treasure chests that you have to get through pecking around at the world map. And it's for all these reasons that Final Fantasy IX was actually my favourite Final Fantasy for a long time, but recently I've found more of an appreciation for Final Fantasy VIII. Definitely in terms of how much I've played the game, Final Fantasy IX is still the top of the list. Next up on the list is going to have to be the rather obscure game, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I was a massive fan of Oblivion when I first played it on the PlayStation 3, I hadn't played anything like it, so when Skyrim was coming out it was very hotly anticipated for me. So I bought it on the PS3 and I actually platinumed it on pretty much my very first playthrough. I just did not stop playing it until I'd done absolutely everything in the game. And then I had quite a big break from it actually. I never bought any of the DLCs or anything like that, but I started getting into watching Gopher on YouTube and uh, looking at loads of Skyrim mods and Fallout mods and all that kind of thing. And that is basically the main thing that convinced me into getting a gaming PC. And once I had a PC, the very first thing I did was go straight back to Skyrim and mod the hell out of it. And I must have done five different playthroughs with all sorts of different mods and combinations and things like that. Judging by my Steam playtime and all the other playtime on the PS3, I'm going to estimate it's probably about 400 hours for Skyrim. But you also have to think that's not even including the time that I've spent modding the game and searching for mods and, you know, tweaking them. And it just takes so much time to do that kind of stuff. So Skyrim is a game that I could easily just go back and play any time. However, the main barrier to that is now, you know, which mods do I use basically and organizing them all. The final two on the list were both incredibly easy to pick out because I have spent many, many more times playing these games than most other games in my life. And uh, the first one, number two, is going to have to be Banished. And this game is highly, highly recommended if you enjoy city building games or logistics games. I find this game to be insanely addictive and there were times when I just could not stop playing it. And also the music, the soundtrack is just phenomenal. It's one of the best soundtracks ever. And it really pulled me into the atmosphere of the game. As for the game itself, when you start, you're in charge of a small group of villagers and you can build pretty much any building right from the start, but you obviously have to get the materials for it. So you set your villagers to work in different kinds of shops and in different professions like woodcutter, for instance, or stone cutter and your main job here is just to make sure that the right people are doing the right jobs at the right time because let me tell you these villagers can die very easily and most people who've played it report that they lose pretty quickly um, on the first few playthroughs until they get the hang of what it is they're actually supposed to be doing because you need to make sure your villagers have an ample supply of food and firewood because they can starve to death and they can also freeze to death. And one thing you also have to contend with is that your villagers will breed and that can lead to population booms. So if you get a population boom and you're not expecting it, your stores of food can go down very, very quickly because children can't work. That's the main difficulty in balancing your population levels in this game. So once you get the hang of it, you'll be building up huge cities that sprawl across the entire map. You'll be trading different goods between traders that come along every so often. But one of the great things again about Banished is that you can mod it. And there's a team called Black Liquid Software, which have made a really in-depth mod, which adds hundreds and hundreds of items to the game and just completely expands it in pretty much every way you can imagine. The mod is called Colonial Charter, and if you're interested, I actually did an interview with one of the developers of Colonial Charter. 
So yeah, not only is the base game of Banished incredibly fun and addictive, but it also has this pretty much expansion pack of a mod that just skyrockets that to huge levels. And yeah, highly recommended from me. So what's the game that I've played more than any other game? Well, it's something that's just come out of Early Access. It's just released its 1.0 version. It is one of the top selling games on Steam at the moment. And although I haven't reviewed the game, I have mentioned it several times on this channel and it has basically become, recently, my favourite game of all time. It is Factorio. Steam says that I've been playing this game for 859 hours, but one thing that I actually forgot to mention that's the case with Banished and with Factorio is that I played the pirated version for quite a while before I even started playing on Steam. The reason I bought these games is because I loved them so much that obviously I wanted to buy the proper versions. And contrary to what a lot of big game companies would have you believe, I've done this with a lot of games that I've pirated, mainly indie games coincidentally, so just take note of that big companies. So again, as I've said before, one of the great things about Factorio is since they released it on Early Access, there's been incredibly regular updates and the game has just been constantly evolving ever since. Not only that, there's a huge mod scene, there are thousands and thousands of mods for this game. Some of them change little details in the game and some of them are total conversions that just change the way you play the game completely. But the premise of the game itself is you have crash landed on an alien planet, um, you're an engineer so you have a lot of scientific and technical knowledge and you basically have to mine materials um, to build up some machines so that you can then automate production and expand that production um, up and up so that eventually everything is automated and um, you can just spend all your time expanding the base. One little snag to that is that most of your machines will produce pollution which anger the aliens on that world and these insect-like aliens will come and attack your base and even attack you. I also really like trains and this game has one of the coolest train systems in any game I've ever seen. You can set up huge train networks that are sending materials from different parts of your base all over the map. And as soon as I finish one game, all I want to do is start all over again and see if I can do things a little bit differently or a little bit better. And that's the whole reason why I've played this game so much because it is insanely addictive and really, really good. So we're gonna do a bit of a first for this channel and this is gonna be a tag video and I'm gonna tag Chronic Spartan Gaming to tell, oh, hi, um, to tell me what are his most played games. And also, if you are a content creator yourself and you want to get involved, feel free to join in the tag and do your own video. I've been Jake of The Retro Perspective. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.